in general, the creative space is very, is all about perseverance. You're gonna get so much rejection, so much rejection. You can't, you really can't let it get you down. You have to just keep going. I was just like, can I get the picture? So I met like novelists, like again, JME, Skepta, Jammer, Lethal Beat, all these people I was meeting randomly and just taking their pictures and posting it online. You need to actually have your own style to set you apart from other people. Teach me how to DJ. Like just randomly, I was like, just teach me how to DJ. Let's see what it's like. He got the decks out, started teaching me. And for some reason I was like, okay, this is cool. Next day I went to the studio again, carried on practicing. And then from there I just kept practicing, kept practicing. Just straight pain. Straight pain. Okay. Straight people were like, hey, we have this party, can you DJ? Cool. I have this event, you want to DJ? Cool. It, I don't know why instantly it just became a thing. I've had a couple money relapse. Up, so sure that's when they're like yo can you play that song again or play this song and they'll give you like a nerve like cool hey. that's, 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 that's the only time if you're making a request you better come with peace yeah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> then i'll play i've just finished recording and my goodness <laughs> what a conversation today i'm joined by photographer and dj timmy marcel as he takes us through his journey it's one that shows no matter where you are today as long as you keep going doors will open up. Timmy's journey is very unconventional, but I guarantee you by the end of the episode, you'll be inspired. If you're a photographer or an aspiring DJ, this is one you are going to want to make sure you watch until the very end. Now over to the show and enjoy. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of What My Best Friend Does, where we talk to best friends in the hope of inspiring you to take immediate action. Today guys, I'm joined by my best friend, the DJ and photographer, Timmy Marcel. Timmy, how you doing, bro? Hey, blessed to be here. Thank you, bro. Come Appreciate on, that. come on, Long time bro. Coming. Blessed to have you on the show, bro. <laughs> yeah. Blessed to have you on the show. Um, we like to start with a little icebreaker. Okay. What did you want to do growing up, my bro? Ooh, bro, what didn't I want to do? That's, that's the real question. Like, bro, I wanted to be... Everyone has football dreams. I wanted to be a footballer at one point. I wanted to be a basketballer at one point, but God didn't bless me with height. <laughs> um, I remember when I was really, really young, for some reason, I wanted to be a police officer. Hey. I don't know why. <laughs> but I, don't know. I think it was before, before, before it was like controversial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know why. I really wanted like, I remember like buying, my mum buying me like a policeman's yeah. hat. And like for non-school uniform day, we had to dress up as like a character. For some reason, I wanted to go as policeman. I, I have no idea why. You watch too much Beverly Hills Cop. Maybe. <laughs> like, oh, what's, that, what's that old show in um, The Bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. I used to watch The Bill with my mom. Maybe. I don't know why, but police officer thought but I, I had so many dreams. Okay. Was, yeah. So you're a man of many dreams. Obviously, you're... Um, in quite creative fields now, both DJing um, and uh, and taking photos. Like, take us back. Like, was this always like what you wanted to do? Like, did you have plans to go to university? Did you go to university? Talk us, yeah, like through through your journey Ooh, into getting journey. into these into I've, these professions. I've always been somewhat creative from early. I guess the earliest memory I can think of is when I was around, I say nine years old, I was in primary school um, in Church Road in Harlesden. And obviously it's kind of a rough area. And I luckily had people around me that, you know, we had like after school programs and all that kind of stuff that I was involved in. And, you know, they were basically, they basically used to just throw activities at us and mm. saw what stick, you know, what was gonna stick for us. And, you know, they'll be like, okay, we're doing football lessons, we're doing tennis, we're doing basketball, we're doing, we're gonna have someone to come and teach you guys how to freestyle, dance and all that kind of stuff. And I remember one day, the the people that ran the after school club, they were like, hey, Timmy, let's make a rap. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. So I made a rap called My Name Is Timmy. Um, <laughs> a lot of my friends know that rap to this day, like 20 plus years later, yeah. my friends still know that rap to this day. <laughs> so that was kind of like the start of my creative journey because I really enjoyed like rapping and writing and, you know, performing it. We used to perform it at like local parks and like events and stuff. So I really enjoyed that. So that was like my first mm -hmm. time being creative. And then as I got to secondary school, same thing, I was still rapping and all that kind of stuff and making music. And then for some reason I decided, I was like, oh, I want to make clothes and then start making clothes okay. and stuff like that as well. You know, started designing clothes. And then also I was doing art in school as well, painting and 
you know, do it. I did photography in school as well. I was the worst student by far, <laughs> which is crazy, but I was the worst student. But then, yeah, so there was just so many different creative avenues that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything that I was like, this is what I want to want to do. It was uh, just being creative was my outlet. Basically. I love that. And yeah, like through secondary school, like at that point, do you understand like what it is you want to do as a career? No, <laughs> I, I actually did not. You know what's crazy? I always think, I always tell people, like I think it's so mad to, te to ask an 18 year old what they want to do for a living. I think it's crazy because they probably got to listen to like a podcast, isn't it? Well, so you, know, you know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> you know no, honestly, it's so mad because I don't even think it's 18. I think it's even earlier. You're kind yeah. of asking kids what they want to do because at 18, you're kind of like, okay, I need to do a degree that's going to fit what I want to do in life. Mm. But then to do that degree, you need to get the right A-levels. So you kind of need to be thinking from A-levels what you want to do. But then also you kind of need the right GCSEs to mm. fit those A-levels. So you're kind of thinking from like 14, 15, yeah, what do I want to do for a living? Which it's is mad. so mad to me because we'll get to the po get to it later. But like, I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was like 23, wow. 24. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, I'm still <laughs> doing more stuff that I didn't know I wanted to do a year ago, you know? Mm. So yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to do at 18. So that's why I just said, let me go to university and just like, you know. Enjoy. Bide, yeah, enjoy, <laughs> bide my time for a few years before I have to make any big decisions. So I did accounting in oh, wow. University of Northampton. Don't know why. I mean, I was pretty good at maths. As as I was, was creative, I actually was quite good at maths. I wasn't the best. Cooking the student. books. You bro, knew how to get creative. Bro, I had to get creative <laughs> in the books. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, I had to I had to just pick something. And I was like, okay, I'm good at maths. My mum's an accountant as well. I was like, you know what? I'm in university. Let me just let me just do something. Okay. So you so did accounting. Yeah, you, you you've done accounting, but like knowing you, obviously I know that yeah, like you you did photography first and then we'll get onto the DJing. Yeah. Like, yeah, how does that come about then? Um So yeah. I guess in university okay, going back to university, I, I was still doing other creative out outlets. That's when I officially made a clothing line was during university. It was called Dying Breed. <laughs> making like we made like jackets made t-shirts okay, made hats sure. like we we really like were doing that for a while and i was like okay this is my path i really enjoyed this and then as i was doing it i was also kind of for some reason i decided to like buy a disposable camera because i was like you know what i want to start taking pictures so i remember getting one of my my best friends cash to this day like we me and him like dj together everything i remember getting him to wear one of the Dying Breed t-shirts and I just started taking pictures of him. Funny enough, the first picture I ever took and posted was a picture of him wearing a Dying Breed t-shirt and then me and him went on a podcast. <laughs> and so that was literally the first picture I ever took. I can even find it for you. Yeah. And from there, I just started buying more disposable cameras and just taking pictures of every, just random things, going yeah. out clubbing with my friends, going to parties, whatever. Then I used to, so this is, yeah, this is my journey like post university now, like, so I'm out of uni, not really like doing anything. Maybe have like a odd job at like bar, bartending, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like I worked at Joe. Just, just just making ends meet. Making know? ends yeah, meet because yeah, yeah. you know? I was like I do. don't really want to get an office job because I'm like I've done any education for so and long. And that could lock you in. That could lock you in. Do you get what yeah, I mean? You, know you could blink and you're ten. You're, you're ten years in. You know what I mean? So I was like I need a break at mm. least. So I was like chilling for a bit. So as I was taking more photos and more photos, I remember just going out to like big events and like boiler rooms and all these kind of events and you're seeing like Skepta, JME, I'm seeing like, I went to a festival once and I, I was standing next to Will Poulter, the actor. Yeah, yeah I know. And I, I know. remember just like standing next to him and started talking to him. I was like, yo, what's up, blah, blah. We started chatting and then we were chatting for a while. I remember we were watching Anderson Pack perform and then I was like, oh, can I take your picture? And he was like, yeah, sure. Took his picture, posted it online and that, that just kept happening with me okay. where I was meeting people and they, I was just like, can I get the picture? So I met like novelist, like again, JME, Skepta, Jammer, like Lethal Beat, all these people I was meeting randomly mm -hmm. and just taking their pictures and posting it online. So at this point, like obviously you're taking the picture, you, 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 we'll get onto like how you're even meeting all these <laughs> yeah. people because the name dropping is mad. It's crazy. <laughs> but like you're taking the pictures, you're posting it on socials and at this point, at this point, it doesn't sound like it's monetized. No. So you're kind of like, I think as I've like to sp talk to people, you're building out your portfolio. Well, unintentionally I'm building yeah. out my portfolio, but like I was purely just doing it for fun. Okay. Like it was literally just me going out and seeing these people. I'm already out. I'm already out having fun. 
and I, just the bonus of seeing them, I was like, okay, this is cool. Let me take a picture of you and just post it online. And and are all of these photos with a disposable camera? All or disposable. All disposable. All okay, disposable. so if you lose it, it's not that deep. Because like, I'm trying it, to think, like, to people who are listening, like, how can I get started in photography? Like, what's the true. startup capital? Like, how much does a disposable okay. camera cost? So, you? I mean, I'll say, I'll say it in two parts. One, I already had a disposable because I couldn't afford a camera. Okay. So I was like, disposables are like, at, well, back then they were like less than ten pounds. Okay. I'm pretty sure the the price has gone up now, and to develop it was again less than ten pounds. So at a time I was spending twenty pounds roughly, let's okay. say. So that's why I was doing it, and I did make it. There was a turning point because I was following, I was enjoying it, but I was also following these photographers like Places Plus Faces, where they were pretty similar like upbringing. Where it was like they're just taking photos, and then they started to get traction. So they were, I was kind of looking at all these people and it kind of became the rise of film photography again. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like film photography was becoming popular again. So I was looking at different kind of cameras I can buy. And I found this camera called a Yashica T-Zoom. My friend told me, go to this place down the road. I live, I live he lived in Victoria. I was like, go to this place down the road. There's a camera shop. As soon as I walked in, I said, hey, can I get like a compact camera? Cause I don't want to, I like the size of the disposable camera. Can I have a camera similar to that? He was like, cool. He picked out the Yashica T-Zoom. He was like, this is exactly what you need. And I was like, cool, bought it. And then the first time I ever used it, I went to an event for like Havana. and As in the came, rum? Yeah, the rum company. Mm -hmm. They did like a clash event for like Daily Paper or something. And again, there was loads of people there. There was like Jammer was there and like Snoochy Shy and like all these like big people when I was taking photos again. And that's when I started, you know, that's the first time I was using a proper camera okay. to document. And that's when it started to like, kind of get a little bit more traction. And like, you, you can tell the difference in the photos. Like, okay. Was, like, okay. So the, the disposable, like- Disposable will do the job. It got disposed. Yeah, it got disposed. <laughs> and then you use the Shika. So yes. a couple of questions I had off the back of that. You mentioned the fact that, yeah, film photography got, was starting to regain popularity. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is film photography? So film film photography is, I guess, you know, analog. It's actual rolls of film okay. in the camera. That you hang up. That you, exactly, you have to you, develop it. Yeah. You have to send, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Like not digital where you can just take a thousand photos. Mm -hmm. I've got one roll of film that has 36 photos in it mm -hmm. at a time, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't know what it is. You can't see it on a screen. You're you're shooting blind, basically. And I've never, I'll say 99% of the photos I've shot have all been filmed okay. to this day. Wow. Yeah, to this day. And I'm then not, you develop. And then I get, I send it off somewhere to develop. Okay. Yeah, I can't, I don't have that skill anymore. I used to do that, <laughs> that skill anymore. Also, it's a lot, it's very time consuming. Very right? time consuming. So and I have places you can just send it one hour, two hours later, they'll send it to you. Okay. Like, so my next question, obviously your first camera cost um, 10 pounds yeah. um, and then 10 pounds to develop. Right. How much was the Yashica? So the Yashica at the time, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was roughly about 200, 250. Okay, okay. It wasn't bad. So it's we're stepping up, but yeah. It's, it's probably more now. But Definitely. there's equivalent, right? Like yeah. you say, so you can go to a camera shop, you can talk about like your requirements, yes. your specifications, and then the person in the camera shop can um, find something that's within your budget. Your budget, exactly, yes. Um, you don't I need to break the bank. Exactly. I truly don't think so. Like all the shoots I've done, I've done big, big shoots, like with big, big companies on that Yashica. Like the yeah. so it doesn't you don't need the highest of quality the highest priced items ever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need something that's that does the job basically. What's the saying? Um, uh, a, a good workman doesn't blame his tools. tools. Hey. Yes, exactly. Okay, exactly. so as long as you got something, yeah, you're good. My next question. I'm very clumsy, right? You're going to all these events, this that and the other with your with your camera. Like, how is it you don't lose it? Like, how is it you're not getting into a passer? Like, is it easy to carry a camera around? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it can be, it can be. Because if you, honestly, if you truly see this camera, it's like that big. Okay, it's so like, you can put it in your pocket Put it in my pocket, put it in my little bag, simple. And then like, obviously sometimes, you know, if you put a strap to it, just strap it around your arm so that even when you drop it, it doesn't fall off, it's strapped to your arm. So it's, it's calm, honestly. I've been very fortunate to not lose it. I've lost it. Mm -hmm before like literally only recently and i was i've had that camera for years oh really but no, but i just literally just bought the same camera again okay but like that was i've lost it i've literally had it since 20 
I want to say 19 maybe. Mm. Okay, so yeah. it served its purpose. It served its purpose for sure. So um, yeah, I've got a friend and um, I was in I beef with him and mm. he was taking pictures um, for a DJ and he always wanted to, I, I always wondered like when you're like at a shoot, like you say, Havana party, this party, how do you not get caught up in the moment and forget to take pictures? Like, <laughs> at what point do you stop enjoying it? And you're like, oh, yeah. how, how do you know when to capture the moment, moment. as a photographer? I guess is you. I guess you kind of have to. You have to learn it. I guess maybe back then I was way more hungrier and just like more determined to capture the moment. I was just kind of like, I would probably be more satisfied that I captured this moment then I'm like, I don't care if I miss what's going on over there. If I like see someone that's big, I'm like, I need to make sure I capture you before my, I can continue my night. Mm -hmm. You know, I will not let this night pass up. And I guess to this day, I still kind of have that hunger. Like I still want to get the moment, but like I'm a bit more like relaxed with it. I'm like, I've done it enough times now where I know how to do it, mm -hmm. I think. I think you just kind of have to know when to get the moment, especially with some people that are, let's say famous or whatever the moments that I've been able to get them, I kind of know when to ask for the picture, you know. You and that was gonna be my next question. Yeah, you have to- you, How do you know the moment? <laughs> it's tough because you don't wanna, one, interrupt them in private moments, for sure. Like if, you, if I see someone out with their family or whatever, like you kind of don't wanna do that at dinner, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like, you need to see them at a party, maybe when at the moment they're not talking to someone, maybe they're, by themselves at the bar or something. I mean, I'm trying to think of an example that's good. Like, yeah, okay. One time I met Skrillex at a party that I, I was already shooting the party, lucky enough anyway, but I saw Skrillex and I was at the party early. For some reason, Skrillex was just at the bar by himself. I was like, this is probably the perfect time to ask him. Like, I don't want to get to the point where he's out in the middle of the party enjoying himself mm. and I'm just randomly like, hey, can I get a picture? No. I can go up to him, I can have a conversation. Cause that's also one thing. If I pick a moment where I know I can have at least a little bit of a conversation, I get a better result and a better reaction from mm. the from the subject. Because it's like, I won't come like, hey, I'm a big fan. Oh my gosh, no, no, no. You have to come with like, hey, what's up, man? Like, big fan, like, love what you do. Maybe be a bit more personal. Like, oh, I, I really enjoyed when you did this, did this. Mm. And they'll be like, I'm also a photographer. Is it possible I can just get a picture of you? And you'd be like, yeah, cool. That's and, usually the time. And on, and on that, like, when you're going up to somebody, so is it mm. like your, <clears throat> your camera's in your pocket so they, don't, so they don't know? So it's like, you're not, ooh, yeah, yeah, like exactly. you're walking over. Exactly. I'm just thinking for people who are potentially in these situations, how did we make sure they don't fluff their yeah. lines? Because also, also, I really truly believe the camera helps because when they see a small camera like this, they're not intimidated. Imagine mm. I came out with like a paparazzi camera, like, hey, can I get a bit? No, no, yeah. PTSD. You know, all of a sudden, <laughs> like, like oh, in flash. their face, flashes, <laughs> you know. I come with like a small camera, like, hey, I'm a photographer, I have a page, you know, I usually capture moments, can I just grab you? Usually it goes down, I'll say like 90% of the time, it goes down well. You might, I might have had one or two instances where people are a bit like, nah, whatever, but. Okay, and about. in those one or two moments, is it just like, okay, Thank you. Keep it moving. Does it get awkward? What for me? Yeah. Oh, me is always. I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, I guess that's that's it. Like, I don't really take it personally, and I don't really think I've had too many of them. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, that's one. That's yeah. one. Hey, let's let's, let's, to... let's not try and bring up no trauma. Yeah, no, you know no, what no, I mean? No, no, yeah, no, no. Right, I don't think I don't think I've had. Keep, keep I'll this say <laughs> most experiences have been very pleasant. Okay, sick. And most experiences, I say my best pictures are when the experience is always the best mm -hmm. as well. This has been so sick. So, so going back, you said you got the camera, yeah. you started to um, get more traction because the quality of the photos yeah. um, picked up. Yeah. yeah, so when does this go from like a hobby into a profession where, yeah, you start getting booked to um, take pictures and paid for these events? So I had a friend that's a DJ. He was DJing a party in, at the time, Ace Hotel Rooftop. Yeah, yeah. Shoreditch. Yeah, Shoreditch. Uh, he was like, they need a photographer. Can you can you do it? Like, it was kind of like ASAP. It was like, we need one like tomorrow or tonight or something. Yeah. It was very ASAP. I was like, you know what? Okay. Like I'll do it. They're like, this is how much they want. This is how much they're gonna give you. I was like, okay, cool, cool. I'll do it. That sounds fun. I mean, like I, I've been doing this for the last 
couple months anyway, but I've been doing it for free and just at my own accord. So now someone's actually going to pay me. So I've been, so that was the first time I ever got money mm -hmm. to actually do this. Funny enough, I'll say, I'll say the first job I got was a friend of mine. I used to work for elite model management and he was like, oh, we have some models that, um, need just photos taken or whatever so i used to do that but i wasn't paid for that that's mm -hmm. the thing that one was just purely for like my portfolio exposure like it was kind of a mutual thing like help the new faces with their portfolio you get photos as well i was like cool but then the party that i needed to that's when i was like the first gave me money to mm -hmm. do it and i was like cool that's sick was doing a lot of, that i think that was mostly what i was doing for a minute was parties and then just my own stuff as well i was just kind of like seeing people and be like hey do you want to go shoot this in the park or something stuff mm -hmm. like that but that was the first time i actually made money from it i did a few parties for them as well so <laughs> that's that's too sick and then in terms of like building out your portfolio um to getting that first gig mm. how long does it take how much of a portfolio do you need you think before people started to take you seriously Ooh. <sighs> how long did it take rough time ran i'd say i'd say like maybe it took it took me a few months i'd say okay. to get booked. but at the time i was shooting constantly like i was always taking pictures developing them like constantly so my page already had quite a few <laughs> few pictures in there and especially if you see some pictures with some famous people in there they're going to be like a little bit more inclined like oh this guy's very good or he captures really you know big people mm -hmm. so that was that was probably how they saw my page. I was like, okay, this guy's a good person. certified. Yeah, exactly. and do you know, like listening to you, I think a key thing for the listener is like because you were doing a lot of, you know, uh, free stuff. Yeah, you getting your opportunity. It was kind of um, you know they say luck is like hard work meets, meets opportunity. opportunity. Yeah, you were working hard. Yeah, you were going to these events. You yeah. were taking the photos, and then when you got the call up, I was ready. You were ready. Yeah, and one hundred. Yeah, and then also I, you know, going back to what you said, like people should really not be afraid to take free work. Free work will can get you through the door. Like literally, like my mum sometimes, you know, when it comes to photography or DJing, I'd be like you know, I'm doing this for free. She'd be like, why? I'm like, you don't understand. Like sometimes you need to just have your foot in the door so they mm. know your name. So they, so that you can prove that you can do it first. And then from there you can start getting paid gigs. Yeah. You never know what that, doing that favor for that person can get you next. Yeah. You know, I've had people, you know, in photography and DJ and being like, oh, sorry, this, this one is for free. But then the next time they call me, they're like, hey, we actually have a budget now. Yeah. Simple, so it's so. all about building those relationships. You have to build a relationship. It's always about relationships. I've been lucky to have a lot of relationships built purely because of free work I've done. Okay, so to the listener who is thinking about getting into photography or they're in photography and you know they're looking to level up, like what would the uh, what would your key piece of advice be? Like an immediate takeaway for them. I think the key advice is always keep shooting. That mm. is the advice. I, when I first started, I was shooting like a madman. Like I was constantly just not even like, even if I'm like, oh, I don't want to like go to random parties or whatever. I was even just like to my friend, like I said to my friends, hey, let's go to Hampstead Park. Let's just do a shoot. Like I just want to, you know, get some more photos in my, in my portfolio, stuff like that. And just keep going from there. Cause even like, maybe you take a photo of one of your friends and they post it on their Instagram. Maybe someone else that they follow sees that and be like, oh, who shot that? Can yeah. I get them to shoot this? Well, right. Like, yeah. it always works out. So I'm always like, keep shooting, just keep developing your portfolio, keep developing your style as well. Because I was lucky to kind of have my own style quite early, but you need to actually have your own style to set you apart from other people. So that is how you should really go about starting photography and in terms of like that style that you've just mentioned there because yeah. that was going to be one of my follow-up questions how do you go about cultivating your own style <sighs> you said it's... that you said that you had yours from early yeah how did you know oh yeah like <sighs> this is me i don't know it was i think it's all trial and error okay. it's trial and error you just have to kind of see what stakes and what people like maybe that's one way or just what you feel comfortable doing mm -hmm. you know i always i feel i feel like just from the jump i was just comfortable just 
being like close to people, like taking portraits of people, being close, kind of have this style where I kind of come from like a lower angle to kind of have the subject towering over me, kind of to make them look more powerful. Like, I don't know what it is. I just kind of developed that naturally. So I was I was just lucky. But mm. you do kind of have to keep going and keep trying new things. And like, even with the, even when you're shooting, you might realize, okay, this camera isn't for me. I need another one. Or this lens isn't for me. Or this type of film isn't for me. You have to keep trying new things. Luckily, I got to the point where I knew exactly what kind of film I like, what camera I like, what angles I like to shoot at, what kind of lighting I like, all that kind of stuff. It's really all trial and error. I love it. Basically. And then um, in terms of like the posting, right? Because you mentioned the fact that, yeah, I was posting and then I had the portfolio. Like, how regularly were you posting? Is it every day? Is it once a week? Is it just as you saw fit, as the inspiration yeah, came? I think, I think it was as I saw fit, but I would say on average, it must have been one or two times a day. Okay. Maybe, no, sorry, not a day, sorry. One or two times a week. Okay. I'd say, yeah. Okay. I'd say roughly around there. Now yeah. it's a bit less, but back then it was very, very... It's established now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. established. Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm just like, going back to... Um, uh, you know, transporting aspiring photographers. You've got your first paid gig. Yeah. How do we leverage that first bit of paid work yeah. into a profession, sure. right? Because yeah. when you're freelance, if people don't call, you don't get you paid. Don't get paid. Exactly. So how is it you go about sourcing um, more work to sustain yourself? So, oof. So you know what? I always say my journey was very unique. I always tell people like following my journey is very it's going to be very difficult i've been very <laughs> fortunate so i'll say i was shooting on the side because i actually did have a nine-to-five job at, okay. at that point in roughly around 2019 i'll say had a nine-to-five job wasn't for me but obviously you know i have to eat now mm. like i have to make money and as i was doing you know just kept doing it kept doing it for a few months um i went to an event for notes one time like my friend's cousin like does his pr or something and she invited <laughs> us she had another friend there at that party and for some reason you know we all talking we're all like hanging out and the guy was like so as you know my one of my best friends is maro toje who's a big rugby player so they knew I knew Maro Toje because we went to school. Me and my friend went to school with him, and he was just like, "Oh, you know Maro? He's like, I work for the Times newspaper." He was like, um, "I would love to like do something with you guys, like you know, an article. You can shoot it, blah blah blah." I was like, "Cool, that that'd be cool." It didn't materialize until like a couple months later. I, I don't know why, but it just didn't materialize for like a while. And it was funny enough is once I left my job two weeks later that art that article came out so wow. we did it i think within that two weeks we shot it for, they also wanted me to interview him for the article and then yeah so that was like my first big like job that i've ever done was the times article of my one of my best friends so i was lucky to have him to help me leverage like a, a big job and then coincidentally covid happened everything shut down so i'm just you know chilling for another few months right? <laughs> chilling for another few months then we then we get to another point so like now i'm like okay photography is kind of what i want to do i really enjoy this like i really want to make a career out of this i definitely don't want to go back to my office job this is what i want to do so i think i was still again maybe just shooting here and there I had a friend that wanted to make an album like so he, i shot his album cover and like just little stuff then maro's team saracens contacted me i guess obviously maro must have said my name they were like oh we have a new kit launch we have a new kit we want to launch do you want to shoot the kit launch and i was like of course so that's an amazing opportunity so went to tower went to um somewhere near tower bridge shot it like on a rooftop it was amazing like beautiful shoot i love that yeah so i did that then from there i think as you know people are kind of seeing more of a, like a relationship between me and marrow like you know he out a lot of stuff that he was doing i was shooting now so and he's obviously like for people who don't know he's obviously becoming very successful yes so yes. he like becomes like european player of the year yeah. he wins all of these trophies yeah. so 
it's like not only is he a friend, but yeah. he's a friend who is it's like on a successful. crazy trajectory. 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 Especially this is post World Cup 2019, where yeah. England like went to the finals and stuff. So like it's and they lost to South Africa. Was lost it? to South Africa? Okay, yeah, yeah, we all went to Japan for that as well. That was yeah. actually kind of fun. But yeah. post that as well, so like he's literally just rising and rising and rising. So luckily he's getting more opportunities, and luckily COVID is kind of still in the air. So there's a lot of shoots that are happening. But the the companies can't get their photographers to come to him. Okay. So he's like, my friend lives twenty minutes down the road. He can shoot it. So we had like Lekeep from Lekeep magazine in yeah. France. They were like, yeah, we wanted to shoot Mara for the cover, and Mara was like, yeah, my friend will shoot it. And then we had Financial Times, and then I think that's when it first started. That's when it was like, okay, now this is this is real income coming in now. Yeah. Like these are high paying jobs from big companies now. So that's really what kind of got the trajectory to, for my trajectory now to go. Okay, to and go you know, coming back to what I was saying earlier, obviously there's an element of luck there yeah. because you can't envisage COVID having a super successful friend, yeah. but you don't get recommended if you don't the, put in the, the hard work. yards. Exactly. So exactly. I think to the listener, cause even like, I feel the same with this podcast, like the guests who I have lined up when I started the podcast over a year ago, I never envisaged that I would have these guests on. I never yeah. envisaged I would <laughs> yeah. have you on. But as you put in the work, the pathway reveals itself yes, to you. Definitely. So I think where I'm trying to go with this to the listener is you might not always know what it is you want to do. Mm. You might not always know where you're going to end up. But put in the hard work, hard work and the rest will Cut. take care of itself. 100%, yes. Because like it would be bad on, you know, Maro's name if he starts recommending me and I'm not good, mm. you know? So clearly he's like, I wouldn't recommend Timmy unless I know he can do the job, Yeah, you know? So luckily I could do the job. And, and then you still got to do it. You still got to deliver. Gotta do it. Still got to deliver. Because you don't get called back. Exactly. So like you get the one and but done. That's what I'm saying. Cause you were... Thank God we've, been, we've had some callbacks because yeah. I'll say a story is that I did a shoot for Maro and another player, a Scottish player, um, what's his name again? Is it Hamish Watson? I think it's Hamish I, Watson. I, I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. So I did a shoot. We team Mauro. We don't know yeah. anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did a shoot for Mauro and like, he was just going on Lions tour for Vodafone. Did that, shot that, you know, did some video for that as well. First time I've ever done video. Like, they were like, can you do video? I was like, yes. I'll figure, yeah. it, out <laughs> I'll figure it out later. <laughs> so did video as well. Um, came out really good like it was such a good shoot everything maybe oh, I don't even know what the timeline is maybe a couple of months later they were like hey Vodafone called me again they were like hey we've got this shoot for Emma Raducanu oh. do you want to do that and I was like of course so they wouldn't have if I didn't do a good job on that first shoot they wouldn't have called me for the next and shoot. that's got nothing to do with Mal yeah, that's, that's just all to do with you exactly so like it really does you really do have to deliver like yes yeah. you have to be prepared and you have to deliver mm. and then you'll get called back again. I love it. So thankfully, like I said, from that, you know, Mario just plugging my name into many shoes. I was able to like, you know, you took the opportunity, the took the opportunity, build my portfolio. So then now when other companies hear about me through the other companies, cause you know, most of these companies use like agencies and stuff. So maybe they might be like, oh, we need a photographer. Like, oh, we have this photographer that we use on this shoot. Mm -hmm. Let's use him for this shoot now. Yeah. And so then, like that, yeah. so just before we get into some of the other stuff you do, to somebody who's listening to this and they're like, well, I ain't got a Mauro. Yeah. Like, it's, it's peak. Maybe there isn't, <laughs> like, maybe I ain't got a chance, you yeah. know? Like, how, if you didn't have that opportunity, do you think you would have got your foot in the door? You know, you know what? Okay. Like I said, my, my journey is very, very unique. Yeah. Like, having a best friend that's, like, very successful helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But also, there's a lot of shoots that I did where I was reaching out to yeah. companies as well. Like, I promise you, I was relentless. I was emailing. I was DMing. I was finding whoever was in charge of that company. Whoever, whoever the decision maker of that company is, I had to contact them and make sure I did that. So, even, I'd say there's a different path I went on so there's many different like projects and stuff I've done. I'll say there's one path more in the football space that I created on my own. So like I I was telling you, you know, before we started the podcast, I am a big avid like football fan and I love collecting like retro jerseys. Yeah. I did a shoot for classic football shirts and they 
basically sell, they're a retailer that sells old shirts. You know, people will find maybe old jerseys, they'll buy them off them, all that kind of stuff. But they're a really big company now. But back then, I think they were just like up and coming still. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I have this idea. I really want to shoot. So I also have this theory where I'm like, if you want to shoot for something, if you have a goal, create create that concept just so you could prove. So I always wanted to shoot for Nike. Nike is like my end all be all. So I was like, I want to shoot for Nike. So I'm going to get a bunch of Nike kits and shoot someone in them just so I can show you what I can do. Yeah. So I contacted the classic football shirts. I was like, hey, I want to do a photo shoot. Can I borrow some football kits? They're like, yeah, of course. Went to the store, picked out a couple kits. Funny enough, one of them was a Man U shirt. So, <laughs> so I picked out a couple football shirts, called up a friend of mine like, hey, let's shoot these, blah, 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 shot them. So I had all this football content now. And then now I'm reaching out to like football publishers and magazines and all this like, hey, this is the photo shoot I've done. If you have anything up and coming that you think I'll be good for, don't hesitate to contact me. Luckily, one person did contact me from Versus and they were like, hey, we, it was the, it was the owner of Versus. He was like, hey, I have this shoot uh, we want to do with Jamal Edwards and we want to put him in a Chelsea, Chelsea kit. Mm -hmm. Can you shoot it? And I was like, bro, Jamal Edwards is a legend. SPTV, RIP, RIP like man. what a legend. Um, so I was like, yeah, shoot, do it, whatever. Some, again, COVID times didn't work out. But luckily, off a tangent, I ended up meeting Jamal Edwards. We became really, like, we became very close, actually, before he passed away, luckily. But what a guy. But now I have all this football content and I now have this relationship with Versus now. Mm. So again, once everything cleared up with COVID, they were contact me, contacting me for other stuff that he had. So I worked with Versus a lot, doing their football content. I think I shot them for Size and Puma, collabs and... I did something with Joe Gomez, the Liverpool centre back. Uh, so I worked with them a lot in that space, and then I'd done stuff for Soccer Bible with Grenfell FC. Like, so I really built up the portfolio on my own yeah. to show them I can do football content. Yeah, and then went into the football space. I love it. And I love for it. Them there. My question, as I've heard that story, is so um, entrepreneurial. When you're saying you're reaching out, is it? via Instagram because that's where your portfolio is are you finding email address is Every, it LinkedIn everything like how is it you're blasting these any, people any, anything if I if I could get their phone number I would have messaged them like okay. anything like Instagram may be the best because it's more personable and you, you have the like content said, if they click on exactly, your profile if they click straight just one click one click email is probably the next best because it's I guess a bit more professional and they can just forward it to the right people blah 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 but honestly, anything I can do to reach them. Okay, I love anything. it. And then when you're reaching out to these people, mm. like, what is it you're saying? Like, are you reaching out, sending photos? Like, I did. Yeah. This is this is my vision for what it could be like yeah. um, in football. Yeah. Or hey, would love to work for you someday. Yeah. Like, how is it you're, you're you're getting? I mean, only one person got back to you, right? But it was the right person. Right person. Like, yeah. what is it you yeah. said? I suppose in that um, message that got that, that I mean, got like, response. To be fair, many it has worked in other instances that I've done, you know, in my career. But like the football one was like a big example of how it like progressed. But like. I don't really know what you say. You just, you kind of just, I don't I don't even know to this day if I have the right, if I've said the right thing. <laughs> I really don't know if I've said the I right mean, thing. I mean, I think you might have, but I yeah. might have, honestly. But like, it was like, yeah, I, um, you know, I just say, hey, Timmy, I'm a photographer, you know, kind of list off who I've worked with or what I've shot or who I've shot. We kind of cater it to like, what I'm, so if I'm going to a football brand, I'm like, hey, I've worked, I've shot athletes before, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I've shot Mara, I've shot this person. I can easily translate to yeah. football. So yeah, I kind of just say that and like, here's my page. If you like what you see, let me know, blah, stuff like that. You okay, know, okay. I don't really know to this day. I really don't know if it's the right thing because I've heard some people be like, I don't like long emails. I just want something short and snappy. But then also sometimes you need to kind of put the right things in the email. It, it really does depend on who the person is. So I agree with that. But I think the way you overcome that is with volume. Yeah. right so if you blast off like people you know when i was trying to get people for this podcast mm. you reach out to 100 people mm. maybe 10 people respond mm. maybe you record with three people yeah. and rinks repeat yeah. reach out to 100 yeah. people oh like, I even, you know, shout out to one of my boys at work he actually like used some platform to scrape 
LinkedIn for all of these people that I wanted to like, reach out to. Love that. I, I mean, I, I didn't even reach out to all of them. There were so many, but yeah. it's like, you have to put in the volume 100%, because a lot of people are going to ignore you. And yeah. to your point, a lot of people are going to say, I don't want messages yeah. or they get messages all the time, but you miss 100% of the chances you don't they take. take. So you've got to yes. keep taking yeah. the shots and yes. eventually a door will be open for you. 100%. Because I promise you, even me, I have gotten so many either aired messages or just like, hey, um, we'll keep you in mind for anything in the future. Yeah. Hey, it's still the future. Hey, they haven't reached back to me since. So <laughs> yeah. clearly that I have, wasn't thought about it in the future. But I promise you, when you get that one yes, it overweighs all those no's. Yeah. Guaranteed all and those And I think, you know, that is something for the listener because I feel that like at the moment with the podcast, like sometimes I reach out to guests, you get air. Yeah. And it's like, you feel like it's the end of the world. Yeah. But like, if it was easy, everyone would do 100%. it. 100%. And you just got to, it's just about being consistent, consistent with continuing to show up and mm. believing in yourself. Yeah. Like we're almost 50 episodes in mm. and like there's still, I just love the process so yeah. much yeah. and I don't get disheartened. And I yeah. know one day I'm going to have the recognition where the people who I'm after, they're probably going to look at it. Oh, let me get back get to back you. Yes, do you know exactly. what I mean? I'm very, I, you know, it's funny. I actually kind of have like a massive ego. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I know you, you're going to say no now. Yeah. I promise you. Exactly. I'm not even going to reach out. You're going to be reaching out to yeah, me exactly. in the future. Exactly. I promise you that. So that's I, how I keep it. I'm like, let me just keep working to the point where you start reaching out to me. And for all the conversations I've had on this podcast and even through other podcasts that I listen to, I think in order to be successful, you almost need to be a little bit delusional Definitely. because you have to envisage that you're good enough. Yeah. And a lot of people were in a society that's quite negative and they're like, why are you going to try and do that yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. You have to have that delusional, yes. that delusional yes. positivity 100%. is what I call yeah. it. Because if you yeah. don't, if you can't picture it, yeah. it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You can't manifest yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, in general, the creative space is very, is all about perseverance. Like mm. you really, you're going to, you're going to get so much rejection, so much rejection. You can't, you really can't let it get you down. You yeah. have to just keep going. Mm. Like, honestly, like I've been so happy with how my career has gone. Like, I can't even imagine if I just, like, gave up at a certain point. Like, oh, honestly. Exactly. And um, on that, like, you're happy with your career, but clearly not 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 enough because on top of the photography, you do DJing. Yep. So, yeah, like, talk to me about, um, yeah, how the DJing came about. Like, I've always wondered, like, what go on with a DJ? What do they actually do? Because my understanding is it's a USB and then it's acting because they're always twisting. <laughs> always twisting. Always twisting. I like, what are you twisting, bro? I promise you, there's a give, lot. Give, <laughs> give it to me. I've wanted to ask this I for so long. You, it is so technical. I always, I thought I was the exact same. It is so technical. How did you get started? Like, like if so, somebody is like, I want to become a DJ, what's okay. the first step? Again, I'm sorry to the listeners, but my DJ journey was <laughs> equally as unique as my photography journey is the same. I was, so going back to, I told you my friend was recording an album and I was shooting his album cover. So as he was doing that, he was inviting me to the studio and just to see the process, everything, you know, so I can get inspired, what to shoot, blah, blah, blah. We could come up with concepts and everything. So I went to the studio and I met these guys that he was producing the album called BPM. So mm -hmm. I'm actually wearing their hat right now. Okay. So they're called BPM. Um, shout out BPM. Shout out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, those are my brothers now. Like, but back then we didn't, no one knew each other. We all just meet for the first time. Mm -hmm. Also it's kind of COVID time. So like the only place we could go and hang out and have fun was the studio. Like there wasn't anywhere else to go. So I just kept going to the studio mm -hmm. and just hanging out with them, you know, making music, just playing around. And we all kind of just developed a friendship for months. Like it wasn't even like, I want to learn it. I just wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. And the whole time there was just DJ decks in the corner. Like I just see them all the time. I had, let me tell you now, I have zero, I had zero aspirations to ever be a DJ. There was never a time in my life where I was like, I want to do that. Yeah. Never, there was yeah. not one. So we're all just becoming friends. We're all just hanging out and stuff. And I remember one time I was just me and one of my one of the guys at BPM called Ahmed, and I was like, "Hey, teach me how to DJ." But I just ran him. I was like, "Just teach me how to DJ. Let's see what it's like." He got the decks out, started teaching me, and for some reason I was like, "Okay, this is cool." Next day, I went to the studio again, carried on practicing, and then from there I just kept practicing, kept practicing. 
Then it was like, okay, buy these decks. So took, bought the decks, went home, practiced it in my house. And I just kept going on for a while. And I just developed a love for, you know, the whole technical aspect of DJing and everything. Mm -hmm. Taught me quite quickly how to DJ. Like it doesn't take long to learn what all the buttons do, but there's so many different elements to DJing. Like you need to learn, you know, what songs to play when and all that kind of stuff. So that will. That and this is something to do with like BPMs. BPMs, so, it's also so to like do with matching like, the BPMs. Yeah, and, and you all like that build up or whatever. Build, yeah, you can you know build a BPM up. Depends on just depends on the night basically. So I was you know just learning that for a few months. You know we'll have an outdoor space in the studio and just all the people that worked in that studio space. They used to come out to the back garden. We used to kind of just party together while I was DJing and all of us were DJing and stuff. So it was quite fun. Then this is like July, I'll say June, July, 2021. Mm. This is when like everything's open again in London. Like all the clubs open, everything's open. They're like, we're going to run a BPM event. Do you want to DJ for the first time in front of a crowd? Wow. And I was like, yeah, of course. So I was like, sick. Okay, let's do that. Invite all my friends down. Everyone bought tickets, all that kind of stuff. DJed. I was the opening act, so oh, okay. really have, yeah, yeah, not the whole yeah, time. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I was just the opening act. Had a good time. It was amazing. Posted it on Instagram. For some reason, from that point on, everyone just started asking me to DJ stuff. People paid or like, unpaid? Paid, paid. Everyone, just straight paid. Straight paid. Okay. Straight away, people were like, "Hey, we have this party. Can you DJ? Cool. I have this event. You want to DJ? Cool." I don't know why. Instantly, it just became a thing. Like okay. it was just instant. Timmy, we need you to DJ this, this, and this. And then luckily it was kind of just developing like a more of a, I guess, presence in London. Like I was meeting a lot of people in clubs and venues and all this kind of stuff that, you know, became cool with them. And then they just started being like, hey, do you want to DJ for us every week and stuff like that? So do you do both? So, so if you go to an event, let's say you do a set, do you then clock off the set and start taking photos? I have done that before. So like that first BPM event, the first time I ever DJed in person, I remember I did my first set and that's because I'm the opening set. There's still a whole night to go. Just started taking photos of everything. Mm -hmm. So I, lo I love that I had that documented, you know, in my, in my Instagram. But I don't usually, I've done it here and there just for fun, but not like a paid thing where they're like, we're going to pay you to DJ and pay you to do photography. I got offered that once. I don't know how logistically we we're gonna do it, but, <laughs> yeah. once, but it didn't. It didn't like end up happening anyway. Okay. But yeah, we um, it's usually just DJ now. Okay, yeah. and like, so many questions on DJ. Yeah. So you mentioned this like it's quite technical. Like I've always wondered, um, when it comes to yeah, like preparing a set, yeah. like how is it you keep the set fresh? Because I feel like mm. DJs have always got like the latest tune. Yeah. How do you decide, okay, this one is, is out of the rotation. This one's coming okay. in. So how my, do you keep on top? My process is a bit different because going back to my first ever set in front of people, the BPM event, I, let's say, I can't even remember roughly, but let's say I had like an hour set. They were like, you have one hour. I remember at the time, I think the party went on a bit, like it started earlier than expected or something. Then they were like, okay, now you have an hour and a half. So before that, I already planned my set. I planned everything down to the minute. Like mm -hmm. this is going to be played here. This is going to be played here. So that full hour will be filled. Because now I've got 30 minutes extra. I was like, oh, I have to like freestyle it now. So I ended up just freestyling the whole set. So from that point on, I never plan a set now. Oh, wow. I go, fr I go in with fresh eyes. Like I don't list songs. Like, you know, in, in, in a DJ deck, you'll have like your playlist. But like those are for like, for your own, you know, what helps you like, different genres maybe, or different time periods, like 2000s, 90s music, like stuff like that. But I would so never- So you have to be organized then and make sure you, you have, have to the definitely playlist. be organized for sure. You yeah. can't just have like random songs everywhere. You have to like organize your playlist, mm -hmm. but I don't go out to a set and be like, okay, I'm gonna play this song first, then this song, then this song, this song. No, I go with the vibe of, of the, the crowd. Okay. And Loki, that's a skill you have to learn yeah. as well. Um, the more you go. <laughs> ah, this is too good, this is too good. <laughs> so um, where I wanna go from that? So yeah, as I was saying like, my assumption of DJing, and don't kill me DJs, like <laughs> people carry a USB everywhere. Yeah. They plug in the USB and then the songs kind of just play and then they're doing some Fugazi. <laughs> they're doing some Fugazi. I don't really, like, talk to me about the Fugazi, okay. bro. What's so, what's squad in with right. the DJ so decks? the USB, let's say USB first. You already, so you've already plugged that into your laptop beforehand and like downloaded the latest. So like there'll be, I'll say maybe once a week, I will sit down and maybe download 
new songs that I want that have come out that week or just songs that I've forgotten about that I haven't downloaded yet. So then you have everything ready, put it in. So the DJ decks, okay, I don't want to get too technical, but like there's two sides to the decks. Yeah, because right? I see the two big spinny two, things yes. that go, wick, 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 yeah, wick. what did they actually do, bro? What did <laughs> so, this do? There's no so the discs. discs are like, they're controlling the wavelength or where the track, where you're literally listening to the track oh. from. So as you're playing one song here, so one song's playing out in the open. I've got my headphones in play, listening to the next song already. I'm, oh. I'm listening to the next song while the first song's already being out. Oh. So now I'm trying to match the BPM. I'm trying to match the songs together so that the transition from one song to the other is smooth and not just me scratching it out and playing another song or just like, you'll just, you can hear when there's a bad transition. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. I'm literally just seamlessly trying to transition that one song into the next song okay. and then boom that's one song being played that's the next song being played now and then I'm doing the same again and repeating and what about like when they say reload re re rewind that, okay so that is when the that's when the place is going too crazy now okay. now, now that the place has gone too hard you have to wheel it just to make sure everyone's like oh and how do you wheel it is there a button that no, says wheel it up or no, what no, <laughs> <laughs> that's what my... no 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 you spin you spin okay, it you yeah. actually spin it yeah you... okay. because the disc controls where you are in the track so okay. as I'm spinning it back it's going all the way back to the beginning now. Okay. So that's, it's like a like, imagine like a tape rewinding basically. And, and then talk to me about requests because there's requests always the gal even me I did it back in the day yeah. they're like, oh go and request this song yeah no requests, what, requests how do you feel requests. about requests requests are the, easily the worst part of the job okay the worst and do you part. air them do you listen I'm, talk to me I'm about it I'm nice I'm okay. at least nice where I can be like okay but I won't play it still <laughs> I, I told you okay <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, like, I'm I'm like, yeah yeah sure 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 <laughs> but I won't play it but then sometimes you get people badge you like, oh, you didn't play it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I still won't play it. But sometimes, I mean, rare occasions, you might get one person being like, oh, can I play this? I'm like, okay, that's actually a good request. I will play that. Okay. But the thing is, the thing is about requests. First of all, I say, first of all, just don't don't ask for requests. But if you if you really feel the urge to, make sure it fits within the genre that is already being played right now. Because you can't because you can't come to me now, mate, I'm playing Burner Boy, and some girl comes to me like, play Taylor Swift. I'm not going to yeah. play Taylor Swift right now. That makes no sense. Yeah. So if you say, if I say, hey, play Burner Boy, I'm playing a Burner Boy track. Let's say I'm playing Last Last. And then if you're like, hey, can you play anybody? Yeah. I'm like, cool. That yeah. makes sense. Mm. But you can't just tell me to play something so obscure. And I'm not gonna play. That's a, that makes no sense. And, and if if you do, if you do suggest a song that's obscure, you have to let me get to that point. Mm. I can't just go straight from point A to point B. I have to make. I have to build the journey. Yeah. And get to that song. I, I love it. You know? And then like, is there a case where songs been played and then people request it? So you've already played a song in your set. Oh. And then maybe they weren't there. Oh yeah. Maybe I say come. sorry. I already played it. Okay. And then yeah. it's one song per set. Ne you never yeah I rarely repeat unless the set's been re if it's a really long set where I know that when I played it early those batch of people have left okay then I might play and, it or again. if it's like a banger because I feel like oh, Kendrick not like us I that, gets, that gets spun that oh gets my, spun I, <laughs> I dj that last week I must I swear I played that four times in <laughs> four times in a row it was that lit four, yeah. four times in a row it was crazy. <laughs> no, no, no. They, there's, there's something different in that track. It's, I don't know. They uh, love it. Yeah, the no, like, is, it's too much. Legitimately, four times in a row, okay. I played it. It was crazy. All right. So <laughs> I feel like okay, I'm finally understanding like the allure of, of being a DJ. Um, in terms of like what you can expect to earn as a DJ, right? Like obviously, yeah. Ibiza, they earn lots of money. Yeah, those are the big What's ones. more lucrative? Would you say taking photos and being on shoe or? DJing and what's more frequent as well because okay. we've got to think about sustainability yeah. right like you've got two things to sustain yeah. yourself where do you say it's easier to get more work see there we are. okay said it perfectly because it's all about what's more frequent mm. so I would say if we're just doing one-offs okay it also really does depend let's okay let me let me start with DJing first DJing let's say at my level where, you know, I'm not like a huge, I'm not like Calvin Harris or Diplo or whatever. I'm just like, no, I'm a DJ that just DJ around clubs in London and some events, all this kind of stuff. So I've done, let's say residencies in London for like clubs, you know, you'll get like, usually sometimes the club will have a per hour rate. You know, it can range from like, I guess base level, base, base, base level was like 50 pound an hour. That's like the minimum, minimum, if you're willing to take that. 
So let's say that, but it can vary. Like some places will offer like, oh, we pay a hundred an hour, we pay two or whatever. Okay, like it okay. really just does. It really just does depend on mm -hmm. where you go. And you get tips as well. Like are people as people spraying I've, you with tens I've, and twenties. I've had a couple money wheel ups for sure. That's where they're like, yo, can you play that song again or play this song and they'll give you like a no. I'm like, cool. Hey! That's, I'll take a That's the only time. If you're making a request, you better come with peace. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> then I'll play it. But, money yeah, wheel up. Yeah, that was cool. Man. Yeah. yeah. So I do that. I love it. I love but, it. Um, I say that I say that's how much roughly but then also I've done like big events you know I've done like I've DJed for who have I DJed for I've DJed for Campari uh, DJed for like you know oh like big big, big companies yeah, big brands. and brands yeah, yeah okay. big brands so you do some events for them and stuff like that and you know they'll obviously their budgets are a little bit higher you know so you know, those could be in the hundreds to the thousands. It, it just really depends on what their what their um, rates are. Mm -hmm. But those jobs don't come every day. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they do well, sometimes they don't. But, you know, it depends. You know, do festivals as well. Like, it be more. But it really does depend. But if you're doing, like, one-to-one -one basis, photography will obviously be more because you're working with big companies with big budgets that need to go out to different platforms, like, still go on TV or Instagram or whatever platforms there. So they're obviously going to be paying the most. Mm -hmm. But I've had photography jobs I've paid ridiculous amounts of money mm -hmm. for one job. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll take this, obviously. It just really varies. It really, really varies. Okay. I love it. I yeah. love it. Um, just going back to, to, to DJing, like, what do you think is a common, what's a common misconception about DJs? Like, people think, oh, yeah, every DJ does this and that, but it's just not true. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, like, you kind of got the, like, I guess people just think DJs are, like, button pushers. You yeah. Know? It's just simple. But I promise you, it is so... It's technical. It's technical. Okay. Like, there's so many factors to think about. There's, you really have to think about, okay, what songs... What, when to play certain songs and when not to play certain songs. And, like, okay, it's this point of the night. I need people to be on a down. You know, it's getting towards the end. I don't want to be playing hype tunes where people are, like, still on a high when the, when the club's ending. And you're, like... I want more. No, no, you need to get people a bit down, you know? Just getting them ready to leave. Getting ready to leave, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. You I know, love it. You, there's so many technical aspects you need to think about when it comes to DJ. Has it, has it impacted your ability to enjoy a night now? Because you're like, oh, the BPMs are, the you BPMs know what? are wrong. It's, uh. it's kind of some, I've definitely been out before. I'd be like, that It was a terrible transition from that DJ. Yeah. Like, but some, I, I still couldn't enjoy it now easy. But like, you can, you hear things more now a little bit. Uh -huh. But then that's also in a good thing as well. You can really appreciate when there's a good DJ playing now. Like, oh, that guy was that. very, very good, you know. I hear that, I hear that, I love so. that. And um, yeah, to the listener again, like obviously we did it with photography. If somebody's listening to this, like, oh, okay, maybe maybe I want to try my hand at DJing. Like, what, would, what should their immediate next step be if, you know, you want to learn to DJ, become a DJ? Immediate steps is to buy decks <laughs> that yeah. is the first step and, that, and how much decks. can like a, a, a cheap set cost you so i'd say like you know you don't really need anything more than a it's called a pioneer ddj those are like you can get them for like two to three hundred pounds okay. and that's the that's like the one you put in your bedroom okay. you know and the thing is about pioneers is that once you learn on one pioneer you can play on any pioneer so even the ones in the big clubs that are like this big you can play on those because all the buttons are in the same position they're just it's just compact in a smaller space so that's the first step is buying the dj decks downloading the software record box downloading music onto there practicing your transitions all that kind of stuff and then i guess just kind of getting yourself out there it's kind of tough because i like I said, I was fortunate. I, the people that taught me ran events. So mm. they were like, putting you. they put me in front of the fire immediately. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to do that as well. Like my boy, I was mentioning my boy Cash, when he first started DJing, I was already getting residencies. So I used to be like, hey, Cash, come with me to my residencies. You can play, like as I'm playing, I'll you can play for 15 minutes just to show you what it's like to DJ in front of a crowd, you know? So kind of helping him in that way. Because the best way, honestly, the best way to learn as a DJ is to be, in front of people, like mm. get thrown straight into the deep end. There's no other way. Yeah. You have to just. And is there, is it is it like when you start? Is it difficult? So that first night, mistakes made, oh, transitions. Oh, on. it'll be bad. It'll but be, you just you learn on the you job. You learn on the job. You I learn it, and it's. I promise. I swear, there's no other way to learn. I love it because 
you there's so much you can do in the bedroom by yourself with no crowd you need to learn you need to learn how people react to certain songs and how they react to certain transitions or you know you need to learn when to fade out a song or when to bring in the song next you know because you don't want to like you know if you're on a night out you don't want to hear a song for the whole the whole three four minutes you have to learn when to cut it off. But sometimes people yeah. cut it off too soon. Yeah. That's sometimes, also that's a thing. thing. That's also a thing too, yeah. yeah. You cut it off way too soon. So you kind of have to figure out where's a sweet point. Mm. And that just requires constantly playing that song yeah. and figuring it out, trial and error. Okay, I played it. This time I played it too early. I, I cut it off too early. I'm going to leave it off for a little bit. Okay, this time I left it for too late. Now I find that sweet spot in the middle. It literally is just keep going out and... Doing it in front of people. Right. I, I really love this conversation. A couple of a couple of things, like as as we round up this section, it sounds like a lot of your opportunities have come from like the power of networking. Yes, it, definitely. Like you seem like I mean, I can just feel the energy. Like you're such a yeah. positive person. This has been such an open and flowing conversation. I suppose my question is, yeah, like to people who might struggle with networking, like even me, like I've been invited to stuff bit scared to go on my own yeah. like need to go with people like what is your advice to network like you, you've obviously stopped people asked them for a photo not felt a way about it yeah. how is it we can reprogram ourselves to yeah network and speak mm. to the people that we want to speak to i okay i would say one i'm personally lucky i'm, I'm just a natural um extrovert mm. I just love connecting with people. Like I've just been like that since I was a kid. So naturally I'm just very fine with networking. I think it's my most useful skill. My friends actually tell me your most useful skill is just the way you can network with people. You can just get along with anyone. So luckily I've been able to do that. But also, I also have this thing in me where I'm like, you don't want to have any regrets. Cause I can see these people like, I, sorry, I actually keep name dropping in this. It's fine, it's fine, I actually fine, keep fine, name, fine. I really <laughs> want to keep name dropping. I went to a Paris Fashion Week party last year. It was Hayley Bieber's party. And I remember we were in the party and I see her leaving the party, literally about to walk out. I was like, when am I going to see Hayley Bieber ever again? Mm. I went straight to her. No like, security. She had one security guard okay. in front of her. But I went straight you to just, her. He just gave us the pressure gave, point. Yeah. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> this guy was very big, so he put up with twisted my arm. But I went straight up to Haley Bieber. I was like, I was like, oh my God. I was like, sorry, before you leave, like I'm a photographer, can I please just get a picture of you, blah, blah. She was like, yeah, of course. Took the picture, cool. Then she obviously she had to leave. It wasn't too much of a conversation. But I was just thinking in my head, I was like, imagine I didn't do that. Imagine I saw her leave and I just let her leave. Mm. Like, so think about that when you're like, thinking about your networking opportunities or like, should I go to this party or should I say hi to this person? Like think about you regretting not speaking to that person in the future. Cause you're like, if I, all I all I had to do was just say hi, okay. strike up a conversation and my career could go to another direction. Like, so that's how I feel. I'm always like, I don't want to regret things. Like I've had maybe one or two instances where I didn't go up to people, mm -hmm. but it's rare. It's rare when I don't. I love it. It's very rare. I, like, I, will, I will go up to most people. Okay. And I'll say I've, is been such a good like thing for me because like I can say I've met like the coolest people ever in the world. And like, just just from being fearless, just be, be literally being fearless. Like I've literally met your favorite athletes, actors, whatever, musicians, purely because I was like I just want to. I'm just gonna go up to them for like. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You just have to come with a good energy. It's so right? funny that you said that because yeah, I'm so self conscious when I see people. <laughs> like I go to um, I gym at Third Space. Okay. And yeah the who's who's there. Like, yeah. I don't, don't want to bait anyone up in case they revoke my membership. <laughs> but like, I'm Same looking at them. I'm well. always like, I go home, I'm like, oh, should I have spoke to them? Should I? And my mates is like, like, just ask them to come on the pod or this, that, and I'm like, you never know. But I'm like, but what if they, what if they say no and then I've got to see them That's again? That's literally, <laughs> literally just, you know what's funny? Just if firm you, it. I firm it, honestly. Yeah. Same as me. My gym as well. I go to gym in Soho House, but who's who's all over. Yeah. Luckily, I've, I've been able to get some Network. good relationships yeah. there, to be fair, yeah. in the gym as well. So like, I promise you it works. Okay. It really does it. work. Like, I love it. Yeah. Um, I promise you next time you're at the Thursday, if you see someone, you, you, I'm actually challenging you. You have to go up to someone. Okay. And well, just be like, it, I have this podcast. Literally all you need is like, can I just get your email and I'll send you, mm. send you all the material or whatever. Watch this space. Yeah. Folks. Come on. Um, come on. Yeah. As we wrap up, like, 
where do you see yourself in the next five and 10 years to me? Manifest, we call Ooh. this the manifest corner. Like you're already obviously living like quite an aspirational life, but yeah, where where, where do you want to go next with your with your photo ph photography and DJing? Um, oh, I always say, you know, I get this question a lot. I've even, I've even got this question very recently. And I'm just kind of like, I'll, I'll give you a few goals of mine, but like, I'm always the kind of person like, I always like to take the opportunity as they come. I don't really want to like, be like, this is what I want, this is what I want. But like, if an opportunity arises, I'm like, that's cool. I'm going to take it, then I'll do it. But they also, obviously I still have some goals. Like I've been lucky to travel a lot DJing. Like I've been countless places DJ. I've been DJing in Italy, Paris, South of France, like Turkey, America, like, I mean, so many different places. So like, that's also a thing. I want my DJing to literally take me all over the world. Mm -hmm. Like I want it to take me to every single country if I, if I could. If I, if I could DJ in the North Pole, I will do it. Like I want it to take me all over the world and just That's DJ. cold. Yeah, you know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> I'm such a bad <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. I just want, I want it to take me everywhere. Like okay. I want it to be like, I want to be DJing like Coachella and like just cool like parties. Just, just invite me, but yeah, yeah, bro, you you're right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, get I want to be DJ yeah. for like the coolest brands and like the coolest artists. Like I want to do all of it. Like mm -hmm. any opportunity that arises, I want to take it. If I if I'm interested in it, I want to do it. Okay, one hundred percent. And same as photography as well. Like I love shooting things. I'm more I'm interested in. So like. I'm a football fan, so like the fact that I get to, sh I've got to shoot some footballers and like football brands. I want to carry on doing that. I want to shoot for Arsenal. I want to mm. shoot for Nike. Like I said, that's a goal of mine. I want to shoot for magazine covers, Vogue, whatever. The whatever opportunity arises, I'm taking it. That's oh. why I want it. In the next five, ten years, that's all I all I care about. I love it. You know? Um, and then like finally, like, so somebody's got into the end of this conversation and they're like, Whoa like energized that I am like what is a lasting bit of like takeaway advice to the listener okay I would say don't be down on yourself on where you think you are right now like I always feel like no matter what you are doing something you know it doesn't matter what level you are you are actually doing it and that's when you can build from it it's kind of like you know when I got this quote from from Virgil Abloh, who's one of my inspirations. I got to meet him randomly on the street once. Like, he's so cool. But like, I always listen to all his interviews and stuff. And um, he was just like, if you have a clothing line in mind, just get a t-shirt and print on the clothing. Now it's now it exists. Mm. Okay, it doesn't matter. Like, what well, it exists now. So now you can build from that. So don't be down like, oh, this person's doing better than me. Like, don't, again, another quote, comparison is the thief of joy or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like don't compare yourself to other people some people have like if people are listening now don't compare yourself to me i've been very lucky mm. your own path is your own path you mm. will get there mm. so like just be happy with the foundations that you've already set just start the thing and then from there it will just build it will naturally build just make sure you just keep loving what you're doing like be in just do it. Yeah. You know what like, I mean? Bro, bro, like, that's it. That's it, bro. Bro, you, you said the thing. I've received that. I've received that <laughs> as well. Um, this has been such a sick conversation. We've got a quick fire round. Sweet. Are you ready, bro? I'm ready. Let me draw for the phone. Uh, you're going to laugh at this. Um, Are you ready? <laughs> DJing or photography? You know what? People won't believe it. It's actually photography. There's there's no better feeling than getting a photo back. Remix a classic or produce an original banger? This produce is... original banger. Okay. Yeah. Um, play a set at a festival or an exclusive underground club? Festival. Money or happiness? Oh, it's definitely happiness. Okay. Uh, shoot in natural light or studio light? Natural. Uh, photograph celebs or stunning landscapes? Celebs. Fashion shoot or wildlife? Fashion. But I, do, uh, I do like wildlife. Um, capture a candid moment or stage the perfect shot. Candid, always. Um, who has it easier, men or women? I mean, I I guess it's men. I guess it's men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no right answer. There's but no there right is a right answer. answer. Yeah. Um, and then finally, like, who would um, your dream dinner guest be? Pharrell Williams. Okay, love it, love it. Um, Timmy, we do have a closing tradition on this oh, podcast. Um, with everything that you've been through, knowing what you know now what advice would you give your younger self and would you still be doing the same thing? I would say to my, you know what? I, the only reason I'll say this to my younger selves cause it's just how I was. As much as I was of like, I was a creative and all this kind of stuff. I was a little bit like, a little bit too laid back when I was younger. 
if I was, if I could tell my younger self, just pick up the pace a little bit. That's what I'll tell him. Just like, you know, get a move on a little bit. Yeah, you, know? you got this. You got like, this, like, yeah. Like, stop walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. a little push. Give a little push. <laughs> it's like, get a pace on a little, right. you know? So like, that's why, because I think things come at your own, they come at your own pace for sure. But when I was young, I was a little bit, a bit too laid back. So I tell myself, yeah. Six, six, six. Pick it up a little bit, bro. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and where can people find you, bro? Uh, So we've got Taken by Timmy on Instagram for the photography. Uh, Timmy Marcel, that's my personal page. That's where I post probably more the DJing side. You know, might be hints of photography, but it's usually more the DJing side and more my personal life. Um, and yeah, so far, so far, but there'll be other stuff that I'll be plugging through those channels soon. So yeah, and uh, we spoke off camera. You said you got something coming, you got yeah. something cooking, but we'll save it. We will save it. You will save it. Yeah, you will save it. Yeah, we'll we'll save save it. Watch yeah, this space. Coming. Watch this space. Um, sure. Timmy, thank you so much, bro. This has been um, yeah. such a such a sick conversation, guys. If you've gotten to this point in the podcast, you know, make sure to show love, comment, uh, like. If you haven't already, subscribe. It does wonders. Please let us know who you want to hear from. We got the DJ. We got the photographer. Um, this has been another episode of What My Best Friend Does. If you didn't know, now you know. And go and take some action. Come on. Thank you, bro.